Hello everybody, happy Friday. It's Melanie here from Mel Zinke Fingers. Thanks for joining me today. I'm just going to make sure that I am in the right place and that everyone can hear me. So welcome and happy Friday. It's always a highlight of my week to have you joining me today, so I appreciate it. And it looks like I'm in the right place and you can hear me great. So when you jump on, say hello so I know you're here. And I hope everyone had a great week. Today we are going to work with the super cool On the Ocean Bundle. We're going to make a couple of cards with these neat stamps. They have so much texture to them and then the coordinating dies are awesome. I love them. So we're going to make one card that focuses on the dies and one card that focuses a little more on the stamps so that you can see what this can do. And then of course you can always use them together to make it even better. Hi Julie, welcome and happy Friday. All right, so I'm going to give everyone just a couple of minutes to get here and then I have a couple of important announcements that I need to share with you. So let's give everyone maybe like another minute and hopefully everyone finds us and then we can get started creating. Now, time is running out to shop from our annual catalog. We have about a month and a half left of this catalog and there's going to be a lot of big announcements coming up over the next couple of weeks. So I just wanted to make you aware to Keep your eyes open for newsletters and posts announcing all kinds of exciting things that are coming. Hi, Joan. Happy Friday. Welcome and thanks for joining me. I appreciate that. So if you have not been here in a while, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. It's always so fun to get to spend an hour creating with you. Today we're going to make some really cool cards with ships. So if you like ships and the sea and open waters, it's always fun to get to create with something that is of interest to you. So hi, Joan is from far away. Thanks, Joan. I appreciate that. From Washington State. It's so far from here in the Midwest, <laughs> in, in Northwest Ohio, although I do have family in the state of Washington. So, all right, so let's get started. So today we are going to talk a little bit about what's coming so that you don't miss anything. So as I mentioned, the annual catalog is going to expire on May 4th. Third, I believe it is so it tells you way back here 3 May 2022 this is going to expire and Stampin Up has announced some very exciting news they're going to do a color refresh so this is all we've gotten to see this black and white photo that I just bent <laughs> but this black and white photo telling us that there's more coming so we will I'm sure get this image in full color once they announce our new colors, but Stampin' Up! has announced a color refresh. What that means is they're going to update the core color line. So right now we have four color families. We have our, um, our brights, neutrals, regals, and subtles. Oh, so Joan, you live close to, to Seattle, okay. So then we have our in-color collections, which are not considered core colors. So these colors, we get five colors that come in each year and five colors that go out each year. So these are separate from our core color line, okay? So what they have announced is that these four core color families are going to be updated with some cool, new, fun, trendy, beautiful colors. I don't know how many colors we're going to get that are new, in the past, we've it's usually a good third, if not more, of the colors get exchanged, but there's always some that stay. So um, April is when you'll really start seeing what is to come. But for now, my recommendation to you is to do a thorough color inventory of your supplies. I would double check your ink pads 
And if you have ink pads that you would like to continue using, I recommend getting the Classic Stampin' Ink Refill. They're only $4 each, and it's a minimal investment to be able to continue to use your ink pads for a long, long time moving forward. You don't have to worry about them drying out. Plus, you can use the ink for some cool techniques and other things to help um, stretch your ink. Now, if you have favorite colors, you may also want to grab a pack of cardstock or maybe an embellishment to help bring it in and coordinate it with some of the new things. But I would do an inventory now because once we know what colors are coming and what colors are retiring, stuff is going to sell like that. And I don't know how much more restocking Stampin' Up! will do of these colors. I suspect that once they announce those colors, it's going to be wall supplies last, and I don't want you to miss out on something that you may want. Hi, Julie. Welcome. Oh, hi, Shirley. Welcome. We're just getting started. So, color inventory. Please add that to your list. And uh, let me know if you have any questions on anything or if you have any color items that you would like to order, here is my current host code, and I will post it in the description of this video when we're done. So if you're watching live, if you look up in this upper left-hand corner, you're going to see a red banner that says live. That means that you're watching me real time, okay? I'm actually live. If that red banner is gone, you're watching the replay, and I won't be able to respond to questions uh, immediately, but please share them in the thread, and I will indeed get back to you. Um, or you can reach out to me uh, separately uh, with any questions that you may have. So that's the color refresh, okay? All right. Um, second of all, I will be in about another week or so, I will start gearing up for my April class to go. And I will show you what I'm going to be using for my last class. And I'm hoping that with the retiring of products that it's not a problem. But it is from the annual catalog. And we are going to be using this gorgeous shaded summer stamp set. And I'm going to have an incredible bonus offer for you if you don't already have the stamp set. And then you add it on to your class kit, I'm going to have an incredible offer for you. So stay tuned for that. There'll be more details coming soon, okay? If you are uh, waiting for your Easter Bunny class kit for this current month, all those supplies, I'm waiting for them to arrive and I'll get kits off to you, okay? All right, and so let's stamp. So today we're going to use the cool on the ocean stamp and die bundle. That's out of our mini catalog. This is the January to April mini catalog. You can find this on page 70. There's some really neat samples here for you to see and enjoy. And I'm going to make two additional projects with you today. So this one really focuses on the um, dies that are in the die set. So this is the On the Ocean die set. There are both uh, coordinating and accent dies in here. So you have some open dies that cut out some of the images, your cloud, the wheel, and the ship. So those are coordinating images. Then you have accent dies. So you have a couple of sail images. You have this really cool ship, which we're going to use on this card. And then you have a skull and crossbones and these really, really neat water accent pieces. And I'm going to make a little variation of this card as we create together so that you can get a couple different ideas on how to use these, okay? And then the stamp set has a lot of texture to it. So I'll show you a little trick to help get a little more definition out of these stamps that have this texture in it with your ink pad. You've seen me uh, ex explain this tip before. So hopefully a reminder will be helpful for you as you're getting ready to create. So let's create this card first. So I'm going to pull all my supplies in here. Um, I forgot to grab a card base. Oh my goodness, I feel like every week I forget something. So 
I am going to put this here and let me go grab my card base that I think I left on my table. Okay, I sure hope I didn't forget anything else. <laughs> All right, so here it is. So we're going to use a standard five and a half by eight and a half inch piece of thick basic white cardstock for our card base. And you can fold that along the score line. Okay, and I have a little, there we go. And then you're going to want some additional pieces to create your project. So you're going to want a couple pieces of vellum. So one is going to be to punch some clouds. And then this is going to be to cut some water pieces. So you'll want some strips that are at least five and a half inches long. I just pulled some scraps. And then you'll want a piece of vellum that is big enough to punch out three or four clouds. So this piece is four and three quarters by three and a quarter. Okay. Then I did, I pre-cut things today. So then you're going to want two pieces of two and three quarter inch roughly square scraps. One very vanilla and one this printed vellum because we're going to cut pieces for our sail and we're going to layer this up to create a really neat sail effect and this vellum is really cool so this is from the vellum layering designs pack you can see I use it quite a bit you have um, three different patterns in here and they both come in black print or white print I love layering these for some extra texture when you just need a little something. Look at the neat effect you get on this sail by layering that over some very vanilla cardstock. It's really, really neat. And you could use any of the patterns. You have a newsprint, you have a map, and then you have this piece that I used here where you have a lot of text, but you have it in little sections and it's rotated to go in many different directions. So this is really neat. Let me see if I can pull out pull out some of the pieces for you so that you can see it. Here we go. Give you a little better look at it. So here's the pattern that I used. You can see how the text goes in multiple different directions. Then you have the newsprint. And then you have this really cool map pattern. And this would be amazing for the flag as well, or I mean for the sail as well. Really cool. And then you have the same patterns that come in white. So you get extra mileage out of this pack because you get uh, two for one. There's your newsprint, your map, and then here's in all the different directions. So hopefully you can see that nicely on the camera because I think that white probably is a little hard to see but know that this is a super cool pack and this again is called the vellum layering designs and it's a specialty paper in the annual catalog it's a big pack okay so roughly a two and three quarter or three inch square of each very vanilla and your vellum to create your sail then you're going to want a piece that's roughly three and a half by four or so of soft suede and from that, I die cut the full sail with the mast on it and the ship. And this adds all the texture and everything. It's really neat. Then you'll want a strip that's roughly, oh, five eighths to three quarter inches by a couple inches long for a sentiment. Or you could use some designer series paper, okay? Then you're going to also want some designer series paper. Now, I am going to be using the By the Bay designer series paper for the um, project, this first card. And you've seen this before. It's a specialty paper, so you have 
gold and iridescent foils on one side. Hopefully that's picking up how neat that is. And then you have all these really neat uh, blues and greens and soft colors <clears throat> with some petal pink on the back side. Okay. So you can choose any of those would be really great with this stamp set. So I have decided to make a variation of this card. So this card uses one sheet. Let me show you that sheet. And it has all those colors on it. And I thought it would be fun. So here's the sheet that I used. And I cut it down to size. And here's what's on the front side of it. Even that would be really amazing. That's like an angry, windy sea. It goes really neat with this ship. You could even use that for a layer. And then for the variation, I've decided to use a dark blue and reverse the colors. So this is kind of like a night scene. Now we're going to do a day scene where we're going to use this for the sky and this for the water. Okay, so we'll reverse our colors a little bit so you can see a little variation. And on the backs we have some shells and, okay. So you're going to want one piece that's going to be uh, five and a half by four and a quarter, and then you're going to want a strip that's probably about an inch and a half to, to two inches, and we're going to cut it down with some of the dies. Then for ink, we're only going to use one ink, and that's Night of Navy. We're going to use various stamps from our stamp set. I'm also going to bring in the Cloud Punch. I really like this Cloud Punch. We're going to punch some vellum. But you can also use the dies that are in the set. So this uh, um, die set has these long, narrow clouds, which we're going to use on the next card. But I thought these big, puffy ones kind of look fun to show how you can coordinate it with so many other products. Okay, so let's get started. So I thought it was easier to pre-die cut these pieces so that you didn't have to watch me do that. But now I am going to cut down my designer series paper. So I'm going to cut this down to four and a quarter by five and a half. So this is the size of the card base. So it covers the whole front. Okay. So let's adhere this on our card base. So did anyone have anything fun or exciting this week? I always enjoy hearing what you're up to. Did you get to create and stamp some cool projects? All right, so now I'm going to cut a piece that's about one and three quarters. I'm going to die cut this water and wave pattern, okay, and then I'm going to cut it down to five and a half inches wide, so it's the width of my card base, and I'm making this as a top fold card, okay. So I am going to bring in some die, um, my dies here and do some die cutting to create some waves. So I'm going to use this one here that's going to die cut the top of my water. So you can kind of lay it on your card and decide how high you want this to be. Now your ship is going to be fairly tall, so you don't want your water too high unless you want it to be in the background. So your ship is going to kind of sit like this so you can see how tall it is almost takes up most of the card height. So let's put this through our mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. So nobody had anything exciting this week, huh? Oh, Joan. Oh, so Julie 
Oh, it looks like she cleaned, did some yard work. And she got her hair done. Well, that's always fun. Oh, hair appointment this weekend. Okay. And it looks like Joan sells her cards. That's cool, Joan. So you get to make all kinds of fun things and share them. Okay. Whoops, I have this in a little too far. Let me slide this up more because I'm hanging out. My plate is warped. I should have brought a post-it to hold it in place. We'll, we'll get it. There we go. <clears throat> Sorry for the jiggly. I hope this camera's not jiggling too much. Okay. So here's our cool waves. Isn't that fun? And you could also save this piece. And you could almost flip it around. Let's do that and make it a whole second layer. So here's how it cuts. This is what our die has done. Okay, it's cut it right through the center. So now I have two pieces. And I think what I might do is just flip this around and put that on as a second layer. That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? That's like an added bonus. See this? And we're going to add that to the bottom of our card. But then, ooh, you like that. Oh, Joan got her hair done too. Boy, I'm starting to feel left out. I need to get my hair done. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not on my agenda. So we have our um, hockey playoffs wrap up this weekend. Our son's team has made it to the champ to the um, playoffs I was about to say the championship game but to the playoffs which is always really exciting they made it through their bracket play they're actually the first seed those little stinkers have been playing hard and are really on a roll so they're going to be um, excited to play and hopefully we'll be in our championship game on Sunday that's always exciting so now I have two layers of vellum here. These are just the scraps. And I'm going to cut a couple of layers of extra wave parts here. So I'm going to put this through my Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine. Let's get it going here. It's sliding on me. Hold on a second. There we go. I don't have my little mat underneath me. I'm on my paper and it's wanting to slide. Hold on, let me move it over. I like to use my silicone mat underneath so that it doesn't slide. It makes it a whole lot easier to cut. There we go. Get it started. Oh, you know what? I didn't notice that my die moved. Hold on, just a minute. I wasn't paying attention. go. So now I have these really cool and my I can't seem to get the die cutting down today. My um, die was out the end of my machine so I'm just going to give it a little snip here. There we go. Oh, fun. So Joan's grandson just signed up for basketball. I love basketball. Uh, it was one of my favorite things to play when I was younger. Here we go. So I cut these two at a time. So now I'm just going to peel them apart. And I'll show you a little trick for putting them on. Now this is a good die that would um, work with our adhesive sheets. I always like using those when I die cut detail, 
die cuts because it makes it really easy for sticking them on but I kind of want this to be just kind of tacked down on my page so that it looks like it's uh, got some movement and dimension all right so let's bring in our card base and add these water parts here see how I die cut that so it looks like some water. I'll put a little bit of Tombow on here. <clears throat> and then I'll just simply adhere that down right on the bottom edge of my card base. Now this, I'm, before I glue that down, I'm just going to experiment a little. So these pieces, can you see how neat these are? It's like all the moving parts of the water, like it's popping up off the paper. It's really neat. So I'm, I'm trying to decide if I want one or two. Yeah, I'm going to do this. All right. So we're going to do some adhesive on the back of this second piece. So I'm just going to kind of add a little bit of adhesive here. And then we're going, going to use it to kind of tack down this. We'll leave that there like that. And then I'm just going to put this along the bottom edge of my card. You could also put this on with some dimensionals if you wanted to. I'm just going to layer it right down on top. <laughs> and then I have these little pieces hanging off the edge. That's okay. We'll just trim them like this. And then I think I'll do this one on top like this. And then I have this really neat Bit, I have built up this little water scene at the bottom of the card and I'm going to show you a little trick. So I had mentioned our adhesive sheets for uh, doing detail die cuts like this. They always work really amazing. But here's something else I do with detailed die cuts. So I like to take some Tombow and rub it around on, you can do it on a sponge. This is a sponge dauber and just get some glue on the tip and then I like to just take it and dot it on my die cut piece. You could also set this down on the silicone mat and add the adhesive that way. I'm just kind of tapping it on so that you have a little bit. Now this is a really lightweight layer. There isn't a lot of weight to this so you don't need a ton of adhesive on it. You just need enough to make it stay in place. So then I'm just going to set this down. I'm going to slide it down a little bit so it doesn't line up perfectly with the top. And then you can just push it down in place. And if you have a little section that needs some more adhesive, you can just kind of dot it on. But there, now it's stuck in place. So you see that? How we've kind of built up that water? Is that cool? All right, so now let's work on putting our ship together. So we have these four pieces that will become our ship. So the dies are really neat. None of these uh, four pieces have uh, stamps. These are just accent and coordinating dies. So you can see the ship, it puts the embossed and die cut details in it. And then you have these two different sails. So I thought it would be fun to do something tricky. So this is the same die and they are going to layer on top of each other, but I wanted to have a mast. So let me show you what I did. I die cut this die here from soft suede cardstock, and I'm going to just come and cut the sail off. I'm just going to use my scissors and cut right up the edge of the mast. And you can save this if you want and do something with those pieces. I'm gonna cut this off on both sides. So 
So now I it looks like this. So here's that die cut. Okay, I've just cut the mask out of the center. I'm going to put these aside. I don't need them. But now what I'm going to do is put some Tombow, a little bit of it right down the center of this. And I'm going to layer this on my very vanilla piece of cardstock. Okay. Then I'm going to layer this on top. Hi, Sue. Welcome. Now when I layer this on top, you're going to have the mast that's going to show through the two layers to give you some extra dimension here. So I'm going to add another layer of Tombow on top of the mast here. And now I'm just going to line this up right over the top and set it down in that adhesive. Okay, and that's the top of our ship. Isn't that cool? So now let's bring this back in and decide where we're going to put our ship. So it has to go fairly close to the bottom because this is kind of tall. It's going to go kind of like that. I think I like that placement. So let's put a couple dimensionals on the back of the boat bottom. And then I'm going to do the same here. Okay, so you could even use your, if you wanted to make this sails a little dimen um, dimensional, you could add a little curve in them with your bone folder. Because I know the ships have multiple sails usually. And you don't have to curl it a lot, just a little bit so that they separate. There, that looks kind of cool. So let's put a couple dimensionals on the back of this. I don't want to glue it down too much on top because I'm going to slide some clouds behind it. So I think I like that. Okay. So now we're going to take this big piece of vellum and let's punch a few clouds. So I like to do things in odd numbers. So I'm going to punch a couple of clouds like this. But then I'm going to punch a cloud kind of like this. So it's only a partial cloud. And then I'm going to slide this in here and you can use if you have a little tweezer or you can put a little post-it note, I'm going to kind of slide this along the bottom of my punch and punch it again so that I get a smaller cloud. And if you have points, you can just gently round them off. Just create a little variation in the clouds. So now I'm going to put a little adhesive on this and I'll just tuck these behind my ship. And this smaller piece, I think I'm going to put on top. So I'll just put it over the top of the ship so it's kind of sailing through the, the clouds. And then I'll put this one kind of over here. All right, so it's coming together. I purposely put that off the edge. I'll just give it a little trim. And then last but not least is our sentiment. Now, on this card, 
I stamped it on a scrap of the designer series paper that came off the bottom and it gave us that contrast. But on this one, we have the, we've switched it up. So when I did a night scene, this one I'm doing more like a day scene. So I grabbed a piece of white or you could use vanilla. I guess maybe it's vanilla. So let's stamp our sentiment. So this set has some really nice sentiments and I liked this You Are a Treasure for this card. So that's what I'm going to stamp. And I'm going to stamp it in Night of Navy to match that designer series paper. So let's stamp. And I am going to just trim a little banner edge. And put a couple dimensionals on this. And then I'm going to add it to my card kind of right over this cloud. So you can kind of slide it in however far you would like. And then I'm trying to decide if it's crooked. I think it's just a little crooked so let's straighten it out there we go okay so there's our card front and if you're getting this and that's bothering you let's add a tiny bit more uh, Tombow and you can just kind of dab it on the underside here and then push it down in place okay now let's work on the inside of our card a little bit. So for the inside of the card, I have this saying, it says, hoping this year is full of adventure and excitement. And then this one says, happy birthday. There you go. And then if you want to add a little detail Inside you can, there's some stamps that are really kind of fun. We can do this and add some wheels down here for decor. There we go. And there's your first card. What do you think? A night scene and a day scene. You like that? Isn't this set cool? I think it is so cool. Oh, I was going to put some little pastel sequins on here too, so let's do that. Just pop them down here in the water to look like little bubbles as the ship is passing. I'm going to put three in there. There we go. Thanks, Joan. Isn't that fun? Yeah, I did too, Julie. I thought that was really neat. I tried to pull out my specialty papers the other day to really enjoy them because as the catalog is getting close to retiring, I love the specialty papers. I wanted to make sure that I use them. So here's our first card. Which one do you prefer? Do you like the night one or the day one? Do you have a preference? I don't know if I have a preference. I think I like them both equally. <laughs> I think they're really neat. All right. So now let's move on to card two. So our second project is more stamping. It's really pretty. So Joan likes the day. Oh, Julie likes both. She can't choose either. <laughs> She's like me. <laughs> All right, so let's look at what we need to create this card. So for this project, we're going to use, again, we're going to use a basic white card base, and this one is cut four and one quarter by five and one half, and it's scored in the center at five and a half. Then I pulled out another specialty paper, actually one of my favorites. Do you see how cool this is? And this is cut three and three quarters by five. 
Now this is the brush stroke specialty paper. I've used this a ton. I, I don't have hardly any left. But it comes in three colors, Soft Succulent, Night of Navy, and Blushing Bride in a pack. And I think you get two sheets of each in a pack. And I think this is only like, I don't know, $5 or so. It's really cool. It's a really nice paper. It's lightweight. And on the back, it's even colored. You can see it's white with just a little bit of blue that pops through. It almost looks kind of gray. But we're going to use this blue layer. Then I have another piece <clears throat> of basic white that's four and seven eighths by three and five eighths for layering on top. Then you want a scrap of basic white to stamp on and a little scrap of black for die cutting. Then I'm going to use a variety of inks on this card. I'm going to use Pool Party and Starry Sky for our water. And then to create the rest of our scene, I'm going to use Smoky Slate, Basic Gray, and Memento Black. And I don't have any ribbon or embellishments on this, but I am going to add a little bit of Wink of Stella. So for those doubters out there who think I can't make a card without ribbon, look, I did it. <laughs> you are my witness. <laughs> so let's create this. Okay, so let's fold our card base in half. And we're going to stamp on both our card base and this layer. So I'm going to open up my Starry Sky and my Pool Party ink. And I have a little paper here that I'm going to stamp on to keep my work surface clean so it doesn't drive you and me crazy. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the water stamp and this is really cool it has all this texture in here so let's pull that out and because of all the texture sometimes it can get lost in ink if um, there's too much ink on your pad so I use the back of my block and I just move the ink out of the way you see how the ink pad got light in color it's because I pulled the ink I just moved it out of the way and now I'm just going to ink this up and I'm going to stamp it across my, my paper. And cover it with ink. And I'm also going to do that with <clears throat> the layer that is cut three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. So I'm going to stamp and get this all inked up. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to repeat it, but I'm going to do it with the starry sky. So I'm just going to take my chamois and clean, clean off the pool party ink. And I'm actually done with the pool party for now. So I'm going to do the same thing with my Starry Sky. I'm just going to move the ink out of the way. And I'm just going to do it on a part of the pad because I actually want it nice and inky for my sentiment. So I'm just going to do it across the top and I'm going to stamp off. And then I'm going to stamp all over my Okay, so there's my layer. Isn't that a cool color combination for water? And I'm going to do the same thing for my card base. Oops, I forgot to stamp off. So it's going to be a little darker, but that's okay. You want color variation in water. Okay, so there's the card base, okay? So I'm going to set the card base aside for a moment and we're going to do a little bit of stamping now up here to create our sky. So let's take out our smoky slate and basic gray ink pads. And then we're going to want our cloud. So we're going to use this stamp here 
and I'm going to stamp it in just a random pattern. There's no right or wrong, really. And then I'm going to turn it upside down to do the top of the page to just kind of bring some clouds in from the top. You see what I did there? Okay. Okay. So now with the basic gray, I'm going to stamp some birds. There we go. We have a few birds. And then last but not least, we're going to come in with our sentiment. And I like the We Can Weather This Together sentiment. And I'm going to ink that up in my starry sky. And I want to do this on a section of the pad that I didn't move the ink because I want this to be nice and dark. And we're going to stamp it right up here in the corner. So now we can bring in our two stamped layers as well as <clears throat> this layer of specialty paper and we are going to layer this up. I'm going to put my stamped layer first on the brush stroke specialty paper. And I like to put my layers together with Tombow so that I can get it all centered. And I cut this a little differently than I did on my original one. And then I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back of this and add it to my card front. And now when you layer this, it's going to really make this water look cool. Isn't that neat how the water is behind and in front? You like that? Then let's stamp our ship. And I'm going to do that in Memento Black ink. So I'm going to bring this big ship image in and ink it up well. going to stamp it on some basic white and then there is a die that coordinates with this so there's an open die it looks like this and it cuts this image so I'm going to put that through my stamp and cut and emboss machine along with this little skull and crossbones now I really like this skull and crossbones. I think it's a cute little die cut, but look at, did you notice in the stamp set? Look at that tiny little one. Isn't that neat? I think it's really fun. So let me die cut. The ship here. And we are already almost done with our project. And if you don't want the skull and crossbones on there, it's okay. You don't have to. You don't have to put it on there. I just think it's a fun little touch.
Okay. So I'm going to adhere this ship on with some dimensional. So let me put a couple on the back. So one of the things I like to do with my with my little tweezers is I like to hold my layer so that I can kind of set it down and see where I like it. I could put it there, I could put it here, right in the center. I think I'm going to just offset it a little bit about here. Okay, and then if you want the skull and crossbones, you can put that on. Okay, and we're almost done. So now let's go inside our card. And I'm going to use some smoky slate. And I'm going to stamp this cool wheel. And I'm going to do that in smoky slate. So I'm just going to stamp kind of in the center. And I'm going to rotate it so that I can get them nice and close together. And then last but not least, this says we can weather this together. And then this says I'd be lost without you. So I'll ink this up in Starry Sky and just stamp that right there in the center. Now if you have any scraps of paper, you could put a strip. Let's do that. What did I do with my scrap? Here it is. My blue scrap. That kind of matches. That's cool. You can add that in there if you want. Your little scraps of paper work really nicely if you have any left that you can put inside. It's a good use of those little strips as you're working on cleaning up your workspace. If you have those little strips, Tuck them inside your card. So here's our second card. What I didn't do is add some Wink of Stella. And I just kind of came in here and dotted it. You know how water kind of sprays? And when it sprays, it glistens. That's kind of what I was going for with this. You could also just flick it. Or you could do what I did last week and splatter it. So there's our project. See the splatter from the Wink of Stella? So what do you think? Do you like these? I hope you enjoyed the little tips for adhering your vellum. I'm glad you like them, Joan. A good little use for your daubers to add some Tombow to your little die cut pieces. So Julie likes the first one, so she likes these. Yes, I love the water on this one. And Sorry Sky was a I really liked it. I was surprised at how much I liked it paired with the pool party because this is very cool and this is kind of green, but they work together, I think, really well. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Don't forget about the color refresh and to do your color inventory. All right, so flip your annual catalog open to page 122, do your color inventory. Some things are already on low inventory and there's already um, some things not orderable. So I don't want you to miss out. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I'll post the current host code in the description of this video. And I will look forward to seeing everybody next week. Bye everyone and have a great weekend.